here is someone who is running a restaurant in the middle of the firestorm in California that has a rule, no masks in this restaurant. Take a look at this. My name is Tony from Basilico's Pasta Vino in Huntington Beach. We have never shut down one single day uh, since the lockdown began. We've kept everything normal here. We, we've never required anyone to, uh, to wear a mask coming in. And in fact, we've taken the opposite stance, which is we don't allow them. We don't want masks, but you can come in and get it. Well, that's yeah, okay. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. My mother, growing up on the East Coast, she fed everybody. She fed a family of six kids. She fed the neighborhood, the local church. For so long, people implored her to open her own restaurant. So she brought her unique comfort food cooking style to California. She had the restaurant Basilico's Pasta Vino for 18 years in Huntington Beach at another spot. And it was successful right from the start, packed every night. So when she fell ill, I thought I could help. I stepped in a little bit, incorporated some systems, put some put some management in place. And business has, has always been really, really good. I mean, it's always been a great energy in here. Tonight, U.S. cases of coronavirus more than doubling, with two new cases in Southern California. In January, we started hearing hints of a virus that was a potential pandemic that was, that was hitting the United States. The numbers were very, very small. It was mid-March when I started seeing people shut down their businesses. They were self-isolating. When I heard about Governor Newsom considering locking down or was going to lock down, I said, I'm not shutting anything down. I'm not changing one single thing. This is not adding up. Doesn't make sense. My instincts are telling me this isn't right. I felt like they were already preparing for an overblown, media-driven pandemic of fear, you know. For the first couple months, we would just tell people that they, they couldn't wear masks. When they walk in, we would say, sorry, you can't wear your mask, you have to leave. But, but I would say nine out of 10 times, um, people will just rip their masks off gladly. All my guys are trained extremely well. They're not afraid, no matter who the person is, to approach them and ask them politely, they have to leave. I first started to notice that it was getting attention from the other side, from the supporters of the lockdown, when my phone just kept dinging, dinging. It was nonstop. There were Yelp reviews, one after the other, hundreds of them and they were all one-star reviews, and they were all hateful. Uh, they all mentioned masks. We, we later discovered that it was a Reddit account. It was exploding, I think, at that point. There was like 50,000, 60,000 co comments. So from that point um, uh, forward, that's when we started getting a lot, of, a lot of hate calls, and it's never stopped. All right. Get so many of those calls. So many people just like, Tell us we're terrible humans. We had a woman call just yesterday. I happened to walk in. The guys said that she had called a hundred times in a row. And she told me that she was going to come in here and spread uh, the virus to our employees and to our customers that were eating that night. And we had a guy yesterday call and say he was going to come down and put a bullet in the back of my head, ready to burn our restaurant down to the ground. It's unbelievable. If we had an outbreak here, if I had people who were sick, I would have been the first to shut our restaurant down. Um, you know, when our guys in the past have gotten the, the flu uh, or they had a serious cold, I would actually ask them to stay home because the last thing a business owner wants to do is have anybody get sick, right? Um, but we've never had we've never had one single case of the virus here. Uh, again, like I said, this has been the healthiest fear we've actually have ever had. I noticed that you came in with a mask and they ask you to take the mask off. What did you think? Um, I am a little bit shocked. Yeah. Shameless actor Sammy Runhati recently took to TikTok to share about her less than glowing experience at California's restaurant Basilico's. The latest surge has come after Hollywood actress claims that her father came in, in here to eat. He just walks straight into the restaurant to go pick up the food and notices that there's a bunch of people like past 100% capacity. And in our state in California, you can't be more than 25% capacity inside restaurants. And then he gets asked to leave because he's wearing a mask. Some individuals also noticed the Instagram account of Basilicos. The account is filled with anti-mask propaganda. The restaurant went as far as to buy out a billboard discouraging mask wearing. The billboard reads, leave the mask, take the cannoli. This was a gift by the billboard company that ran our billboards on La Cienega and Burton Way, right next to the 
the Beverly Center in Beverly Hills, when we decided we weren't going to shut down um, and, and the hate started pouring in from the other side, a lot of it came from people who, who live in L.A. that support the shutdown. We thought if we put a billboard up there, it would, um, it would in a funny way, with a wink and a smile, send a message that's okay to laugh over this a little bit. And, and at the same time, get your point across. We fought every step of the way with a smile on our face, you know, because we knew what we believed in and we knew we were on the right side of this all along. The support has far overwhelmed the haters. It's, it's not even close. People are coming here feeling excited. Uh, they feel like they're among people that think just like they do. You'll see people going from, from their own table, moving to another table, people exchanging seats, sitting with each other. It's a lot of fun. The food is amazing, and once I found out that he didn't require a mask or made sure you didn't wear masks, that kind of resonated with me because I don't believe in masks. I believe in natural immune systems. My husband and I came out to this uh, interview here a few weeks ago for the first time after not really being out to a nice restaurant, and we were just filled with such a warm sense of well-being. Realizing how important it is to have this social interaction. I'm not afraid to put everything at risk or what I'm standing for here. I'm not taking the stand just for myself. I feel like I'm, um, I'm taking the stand so other people will pay attention and maybe be inspired and maybe do the same thing next time. It's after seeing my mother being a fighter, how she was my, my whole life, I built and defend this restaurant for her and I'm proud that, uh, that all those supporters are standing behind me now to protect it. Tony has been just an inspiration to not only the businesses, but to people. Everywhere we go, we talk about Tony and this restaurant. It's really about freedom and staying open lawfully because he's actually not violating any laws. It's, it's a stand for freedom and, um, and liberty. And without those things, you don't have anything anyway. How fantastic is that story? What a hero. Uh, you know, it can seem like such doom and gloom and walking through the airports that can feel all alone, but to know someone like Tony Roman is out there standing for freedom and our rights in what would seem something as simple as eating food, I think the power of this story and what it represents is magnificent, and I'm joined right now by the owner of the restaurant, Tony Roman. Uh, you are my hero of the week, probably my hero of the month, maybe of this entire pandemic. When I heard this Stop story, it. I just couldn't wait to talk to you. Um, you know, are you afraid? Do you have fear? I mean, that's the question I get a lot. You know, you're talking about you're getting threats on phone calls here and there. Um, how do you do this? We want restaurant owners around the country and the world to do this. Is it scary? First of all, thanks for having us on. Um, I, I appreciate you very, very much. I'm not a hero. It's all the supporters around us. Uh, they're the heroes. Um, I appreciate you covering the uh, covering the story. And you're the man. So, so thanks. Um, you, you can't be afraid. You know, to be an American is is to not be afraid, right? To be brave. Um, you have to lay it all on the line, and you need to be willing to risk everything uh, for our liberty, our freedom. Uh, show no fear. Um, don't bend, stand your ground every step of the way. And uh, that's the only way we're going to win this and make the other side back down. When I, you know, was listening to this piece and I, I you know, I said to the, uh, my, my control room here, give me that famous quote. Can we bring that up? Because this is what you represent in spades. I believe it's Thomas Jefferson that said, if a law is unjust, a man is not only right to disobey it, he is obligated to do so, Thomas Jefferson. When I see you being attacked by actors and people clearly trying to destroy your establishment, I think that they are the worst of what America represents. And you truly, right now, are standing for what should be coursing through our veins, uh, what our founding fathers fought for. Um, you know, our... So Gavin Newsom appears to be a lunatic, uh, and I ran, I, by the way, I was in California till last July. I say now I'm a refugee uh, from California. Uh, are there threats? What is the government doing? I mean, you are essentially breaking what appear to be these nonsensical laws right there in Orange County. Are there, have there been any repercussions? All, I yeah, I agree with everything you just said. You know, 
when I first heard of the, the shutdown, none of it made any sense to me. I could see with my own eyes what was going on. Um, and the first people I thought about were our founders, you know, what they gifted us and our soldiers who fought and died for our freedoms. And I thought to myself, what a dishonor would be just to surrender everything over a mask and, um, you know, and, and a virus that really you weren't seeing the evidence of a pandemic yet. And, and in my opinion, I still haven't seen it. Um, as far as uh, any penalties that we're, that we're facing now, um, we have a criminal action against us, uh, which we publicly come out. We've, we've come out and we've dared uh, the, the governor. We put it on our, on our Facebook. We put it on our Instagram page, daring him to file charges. Don't hang this thing over our head. File the charges. Give us a, give us a trial in front of a jury of our peers. And um, if not, get out of our way and let everybody operate. Uh, you know, like like everyone you used to before before the shutdowns, um, put up or shut up at this point. You know, it's just all threats, and we want to prove it. You know, we want to prove that it's all threats. We have a, uh, we also have an ABC violation against us. We just got our full liquor license. We always had beer and wine. Um, we just got it. I think we were issued it um, when the shutdown started. It was I think a week or two in, which was ironic, and we haven't really even had a chance to use it fully. We are we are now, but. Um, it you know it takes a while to shut it up to, yeah. to, to set it up to invest to invest in, uh, in the infrastructure of the bar and everything else. So um, so now they want to take it away from us. So we had our first hearing uh, about a week ago on Tuesday. Like uh, for the ABC. a mask has um, any action is still hanging out there. As though a mask has but, anything to do with wearing or or drinking you know alcohol or having a cocktail. Sure. Um, you know really unbelievable what what can we do what what do you want people to do to help you or support you what what can we do i think just the support alone you know when we took our stand um and, and it's kind of upsetting for me sometimes when i hear people say uh you know i want to stand up because we have a right to work watch this i'm gonna stop the guy from wearing a mask now sir yeah yeah you gotta take it off thanks anyway so so uh, I apologize. But anyway, so um, yeah, there was a vendor actually. I felt bad for the guy. Okay. Um, so uh, so so yeah, the, we we didn't know that the supporters would, would come out in force, just like yourself, right? Being here for us, yeah. which I appreciate so so much. But yeah. what upsets me is when I hear people say we want people want to fight the shutdown to protect their jobs, to protect their livelihoods. I understand all that, but it's so much bigger than that. It's about your liberty, freedom, what it means to be an American. Um, if you don't have that, you don't have anything anyways. So for us, we, we never knew that uh, if people were going to show up ever, ever again, you know? So it took a while when we first started, when, when the shutdown first started and, and we stayed open, um, people weren't coming in at first because they, people were, were afraid. Right. So, but we initially got this group that started coming in we called them the outlaws. Uh, they were the originals <laughs> and people would walk in and start to see them, you know, around the bar. Uh, no so social distancing, no masks, and they uh, people would see that and they would think, you know what, if they're not afraid, maybe I should, shouldn't be afraid. And over time, the restaurant just started to, to fill up. You get some people walk in and they're shocked when they see how, how packed the, the restaurant is. And again, I want to say that we've had zero cases. This has been the health, ironically, again, it's been the healthiest year we've ever had, you know. So, um, so, so I would say to help us uh, share our story. You know, that's the best way. And if anybody ever wants to, he wants to sit down with me and ask me how I've, how I've navigated through all this, I'd be happy to sit down with anybody, talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, a phone call, conference call through you. Um, but I think, again, the, the most important thing is don't be afraid to lay it on the, the line. Because when this is all, all over, the other side is going to think about the people who stood up. And if there are a lot of them, uh, they're going to think twice about pressing that shutdown button once again. Tony, I don't think what you're doing is anything short of, you know, what our founding fathers did when they signed their name to the Declaration of Independence. I have been traveling all over the country. People say, what do we do? I say, resist. Stand up for your rights, you know. Okay, you can't get on a plane without a mask. Make them put it on you uh, before. Don't just comply. If you have a business, open it. If you have the means, sue. You know, people say, well, my... My, you know, daycare, you know, won't let my baby in there. I said, then sue them. We need to push back. We cannot let this be easy. Just like you're doing, sue me. Go ahead. 
filed charges. Tony, you are a true American hero. I think you're an inspiration in a very scary week, in a scary time where, you know, our votes may decide how this all moves forward. But what you represent is what I think is the best of America, not about who we vote or what the politics are, but by standing in your truth, what you believe, what you saw, um, I think you're an inspiration, and I hope next week there's 20 restaurants like you that end up opening up, and I'm sure we'll facilitate that call to you if they want to know how to do it. Tony, thank you for taking the time. I worked in restaurants for many, many years. I know you're a busy, busy man. Thank you for being a true American hero. I appreciate you so much. With people like you, we have a shot. And I just want to say one thing, one more thing. The biggest supporter of all has been my mother. Uh, mm. she, uh, she's a fighter. And, and, and what I've learned through all of this, too, is that, and I should have known because she, I've watched her fight my entire life, uh, protecting us and, and, and defending what's right always. But what I have seen, the experience I've had, is that it's the women. I'm telling you, the women are, are warriors. I mean, they take action every day. I see them in here all the time asking me, what can they do to help? And I see them online fighting for us and, and setting up uh, uh, Facebook groups, uh, uh, trying to help people launch ca campaigns, uh, um, action groups. I mean, they are they are on the front lines every day. I know a lot of them have great men standing behind them, of course, but I'm telling you, it's the women, and I appreciate all of them. Amen to that, Tony. Thank you. Great words, wise words. All right, Tony. I look forward Thanks to so coming much, in, and anyone in California, all my friends are complaining. Now you know what restaurant you can go to uh, and enjoy yourself. Um, and, Pasta, uh, vino, and liberty.